there are a couple design features about this particular pump that I do not like, and I'm gonna share those with you. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. The other day you guys know that I ran over a bunch of glass. I made a short video about it. I was not too happy to say the least. It really sucks when you're trying to go to work or you're trying to come home from work and you run over a bunch of glass and let's just say you get a flat tire and you have to change it. It's even worse when you have to fix the rear wheel tire because unfortunately it takes a little bit of extra work to do the rear, but luckily my front went flat. Now, to be fair, my front tire is a Schwabby Racer. My rear tire is a Schwabby Marathon. I, I literally cannot wait for this front tire to wear out so I can put a Schwabby Marathon on it. I don't like wasting tires. I would go ahead and do it, but I want to get my mileage out of that tire. And of course, the front tire usually lasts about twice as long as the rear tire, generally speaking. The Schwabby Racers are just not really that great when it comes to puncture protection. Not like the Schwabby Marathons or the Schwabby Marathon Plus. So that being said, I got a flat and unfortunately I had to fix a flat on the side of the road. I missed the opportunity to tell you guys about a really cool product, a product that I use and a product that I love. But first off, let me tell you guys something about the original Brompton pump. It is included when you get the R version, you know, the R variant on the Brompton. You get the rack, the fenders, and this pump comes on the side. You compress it down and you can remove it from the side of the bicycle. The benefits to this particular pump is that it's always on your bicycle. There's no chances of forgetting it if you always have it attached to the side of your bicycle. In that way, it makes this pump very, very convenient to have. There are some problems with this pump that I do not like. One of the big problems about this pump, it's so plasticky and it feels so cheap. It feels like one of those pumps that you would buy in a cheap kit you would get from a big box retailer like Walmart or Target. So I understand guys, I understand fully that uh, when you need it, it's there and that's a benefit, right? But look at this rust on this. I've ridden my Brompton in the rain a couple of times and water has gotten inside here. And I don't know if you guys can see that, but this is rusted up quite a bit already. And I haven't had this thing only a couple months. So I don't see that this pump is going to last and I don't really trust it. This pump is made by Zephel France. It's made in Zephel France or by a company called Zephel. I'll put it up on here. I don't know, to me it just seems plasticky and cheap and doesn't have a lot of quality. Now I'm not saying anything particular about this company, this company, uh, Zafal, Zafiel, Zafiel, whatever that company's name is. I'm not saying anything bad about them. There are companies that make cheap pumps and they make good pumps. This just doesn't seem like it's that great of a pump. But even if it were, okay, even if this was a quality pump, there are a couple design features about this particular pump that I do not like, and I'm gonna share those with you. First off, I don't like the fact that it has this clip, okay? You hook this onto the valve stem and you pull up on this clip, and that's what locks it onto the valve stem itself, and then you begin pumping. Now, one of the biggest problems with using a pump like this is that when you're trying to get the Brompton's air pressure up to 100 PSI, that's very difficult with a pump like this, okay? I usually use my floor pump when I'm pumping up the Brompton. But when you're on the side of the road and you have just one of these little things, trying to get it up to 100 PSI is damn near impossible. It can be done, but it takes a lot of force to pump this thing. Now, here's the problem with the pump like this. That force is going to be pushing against the valve stem when you're pushing on this really, really hard. The thing you have to do is hold your hand on this side of the pump and, and compress with the other side. The problem with me is, is that this arm is stronger than this arm is. So it can't fully counteract the force of this arm and hold that valve stem in place. So what happens, you're starting to put a little bit of bending pressure on that valve stem, especially when you're trying to really crank on it because the pressure is getting really hard. And let's say you slip and that thing goes shooting out a little bit, it definitely can damage your valve stem. And I've had it happen. It could tear your valve stem and then you're out of tube. And let's say that was your only spare tube, you're kind of screwed. So for those reasons, I don't really like this particular pump. I don't like it because it just doesn't feel like it's going to be a very good quality pump. 
I don't like the fact that it puts too much pressure on the valve stem. I don't like the locking mechanism that holds it in place. It just, I don't like this particular style at all. So that brings me to the pump that I use and the pump that I really love. And that is made by a company called Lazine. This pump, it's all metal construction, metal, 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 all the way through. It just feels like a pump with much more quality to it. So the reasons why I like this pump, it has a cap on the end and a cap on this end. This is a cap that opens up where you will actually stick this hose. This hose unscrews from the end piece right here and, and you pull it out. On one side there is Presta and on the other side is Schrader. So depending on whether you're gonna use Presta or Schrader, you just flip it to whatever side. If you're not gonna use Presta, you screw Presta in the Presta side into this side of the pump. And then it has the Schrader on the end. If you're gonna use Presta, you screw the Schrader side into the body of the pump. In this case, with the Brompton, we use Schrader. So we screw the Presta side in. I like this because it has a little bitty air release valve right here because obviously air pressure is gonna build up in this hose and you want, to, you want a way to release it before you unscrew this. And that's another thing that I like. This screws onto the end of the valve stem. You screw it on and it stays in place. There's no way that that thing's gonna pop off like say this one is. When you're pumping and you accidentally hit this and it pops off and then you lose a bunch of air pressure, that kind of sucks. That won't happen with this one because you screw that onto the end of the valve stem and it stays in place. This is the biggest feature why I love this pump. It's the uh, flexible hose. So when you're really cranking and you're really trying to get that high air pressure in, let's say you're at 50 or 60 PSI and it's really getting hard now and you're like, ugh, ugh. Instead of putting pressure on the valve stem, the hose is just gonna flex like this. So when you're really cranking and you can't fully counteract the force of this hand and this hand's allowing it to move a little bit, it's not putting pressure on that valve stem because that hose takes up the slack. So that's the reasons why I like this pump. It feels like it's a much better quality pump. It's got an ABS hose on the end of it. It's got a pressure release valve screws onto the valve stem instead of just clips on, which is really nice. That means it's not gonna pop off on you accidentally. And those are the reasons why I love this pump. So we've established what an awesome pump this Lazain pump is, right? The big problem is we can't put it on the bike in the same place we put the original Brompton pump. It's just not gonna fit. So where do we put it? Well, obviously I load it in my tea bag. My tea bag, this little space right here is where I keep my pump and I keep, uh, my extra tube and, or I usually carry two extra tubes, but I've used one since I went flat the other day, obviously. I have only one left, but I need to go buy another one. But regardless, that's where it goes. What if I wanna ride without the tea bag? I, there's a lot of times I just don't wanna to have to deal with the wind resistance and I wanna go on a long ride and I don't wanna to have to carry that thing around. Well, uh, I don't wanna carry a tube in my pocket. I certainly don't wanna carry this pump in my pocket. So where can we put this, first of all? Well, there's a place on the bicycle that's actually perfect for it. And guess what? It's inside the seat post. How do we do this, you ask? Well, I'm gonna show you. Okay, what we first have to do is we have to unlatch the seat post and we have to lower the seat down enough to where you actually see the bottom of the seat post pull through the frame. When it gets to that point, then you need to remove the plastic plug. Now this plastic plug is a friction fit. You just use your nails, you kind of grip inside there and you pull that plug out. You should pull this plug out from time to time anyway because of the fact that water can build up in there and when water does build up in there, it starts to rust your inner seat post and you don't want that. So when you lower the seat post down and you take off that friction plug, you could actually stick your pump inside the seat post. The seat post circumference has to be close to what the pump circumference is. So if you have a pump that's too skinny, it's just going to rattle around in there. If you have a pump that is almost the exact same side, almost like it's custom fit, it'll take up most of the room and it won't rattle. And if it does rattle, it'll rattle a very minute amount. Now there are things you can do. You can wrap the pump itself in maybe some sort of foam or you could uh, put uh, maybe some tape around your pump or whatever just to kind of take up a little bit of space. So if you have a pump that's too thin, 
there are ways around that. But for the most part, you're gonna want the pump to be almost the exact same size as the seat post. That way it takes up most of the room. Okay, now we found a place to put our aftermarket third-party pump. Um, we can't use the friction plug that goes at the bottom of the seat post, and there's a reason for that. Basically, when the pump is sitting inside the seat post and you hit a bump and it just bounces a little bit, I mean, I don't notice any rattling, but I'm sure that this thing will bounce up and down. And basically what's gonna happen is it's gonna hit that seat plug and eventually it's gonna hammer that seat plug out. And then the seat plug is gonna fall out onto the ground and so is your pump. And that's not a good thing. So a way around that is to get a product like this one right here. This product has a little hex screw with a little cone shaped um, nut on the end of it. It's a rubber plug that takes the place of your regular friction fit plug on the bottom of your seat post. Now it has a hex key on one end and it has this cone shaped uh, kind of forcing nut on the other end. Now what this does is when you tighten up that screw here, it forces this cone shape down into the rubber and it expands the rubber out, which will hold tight against your seat post. But what's cool is when you have this piece, you can stick your pump right up the seat post, put this in and then tighten it and then it holds in place and you don't have to worry about your pump falling out the bottom while you're riding down the road. So the original Brompton setup was pretty convenient. The nice toolkit, the pump that's on the side of the bike, but I already told you why I don't like using the original pump. I told you the, the concerns I have with the original pump. So basically I regressed in convenience having to carry this around with me because obviously I had to carry it in my tea bag and if I didn't take the tea bag, I had to put it in my pocket, which I did not like. But now we have a place for this. And all we have to do is take our toolkit out of our bicycle, undo this, pull this out, and then pull our pump out and we're good to go. So the convenience isn't really sacrificed very much. But like I said, I'm glad that I have a place for this now. Now all I have to worry about is the question of whether I carry a tube or I carry a patch kit. And most of the time, I'm probably gonna go with a patch kit if I wanna remain ultra minimalistic. The only downside is it's not gonna be convenient when you actually get a flat because it's gonna take longer to fix. So anyway, I hope you guys like me talking about my favorite pump and I hope you guys like this little product. I got this from Freedom Folding Bikes. Um, they have all kinds of cool little gadgets like this. And I thought, hey, that's neat. I'm gonna try that out. It's a cool product and I get to keep my favorite pump on me and I keep it out of sight and I don't have to worry about ever forgetting it. So anyway, guys, if you have any comments or questions, leave it down in the comment and question section. Slap a like on the video if you like it and I will talk with you guys on the next one. Bye-bye.